Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. Uh, this episode is uh, kind of a, a second part of these uh, two videos I'm doing on compression. The previous uh, episode of this one, I went through compression, explained a whole bunch of compression terms. Uh, in this one, I'm going to be going over the practicality of actually doing the compression. I'll show you some features in Adobe uh, Media Encoder and what a lot of the terms, uh, how those terms relate to, to Media Encoder. Uh, a lot of you may have already seen this footage that I have in a previous um, series of tutorials uh, where we take this uh, 35 millimeter film that's been transferred and uh, do some editing on it. In this I'm just going to be doing, uh, in this I'm going to be using that footage again to show you how to encode footage, uh, your footage to proxies and talk about a lot of the terminology and the compression. There's also one thing I'm going to cover in here that I did not cover in the previous series and that's reframing. I'm going to talk about what, what reframing is. So we've got this footage here and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a whole range of footage. We're inside of Premiere Pro right now and I've got this footage organized. This is the high quality footage. This is, you'll recognize this term now, this is ProRes 444 footage. Uh, that's what this was encoded to from film to get the highest quality possible. And this footage is kind of uh, some flat footage. Uh, they gave us kind of a flatter profile so it's, it doesn't look very contrasty but they did that so we have a uh, more ability with color grading. Uh, but we're not really talking about that right now, we're talking about compressing. We're going to take this from ProRes 444 down to ProRes Proxy to make these files more manageable. Uh, let's say we're delivering this footage to the editors and we want to have it all prepped and ready to go for the editors. So I'm going to kind of go through a little bit of a process here that um, so I'm going to go through a little bit of a process here, uh, getting this all prepped for the editor. Because the editor, let's pretend the editor is going to be the editor and not the colorist, the person that's not doing the color grading. So all they're going to do is perform an edit with the proxy footage and then deliver that to uh, the colorist. So we're going to prep this for the uh, for the editor. And one of those, and one of the things that we're going to do to prep it for the editor is we're going to get the proper framing. This was shot on a film camera here, on a 35 millimeter film camera, and the uh, the film camera is uh, the, the was called the uh, the Arycam uh, LT camera shoots in this full frame method where it is actually a very close to a 16 by 9 image, but it has framing guides for 1.85 to 1. So this is a 16 by 9, or if you simplify that down to uh, basically th that's 1.77 to 1. Uh, for every 1.77 pixels across, you have one pixel up and down. Uh, so that's simplified. So that basically means that you have a wider image than you do a tall image. Uh, but this is a little, this is not wide enough for the type of movie screen we want to show it on. We want it in 1.85 to 1. And what you get with uh, while you're shooting is you actually have guides on the eyepiece of the camera that shows the top line and the bottom line where that's going to be cut off when it goes to the cinema when it goes when it, go, it goes to the movie house the way they used to do this with the projector is the uh, they had the guides that they were shooting and sometimes you'd, they, the boom would be sticking down into that guide there and you wouldn't be able to see it because the projector would actually uh, when it's projecting on film would actually cut off the top and the bottom and it had a gate that was a 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio rather than a 1.77 to 1 so basically we want a wider aspect ratio but oftentimes uh, cameras uh, will shoot very intentionally uh, a, a taller frame and then they'll crop it later on to letterbox. And the reason why they do that is because they will have more room to play with here. Like if, if you don't, if say you don't like the headroom at the top, you're actually able to push that frame uh, up and down. Let's kind of show you what I'm talking about here. Let's, let's do an example of that. So I'm going to make a timeline here. I'm going to go to new item. And if we do a typical uh, 1920 by 1080, let's, let's show you quickly how you've determined aspect ratio. I'm going to make a new sequence and we're going to make a standard, let's go up to uh, 1080 and make a 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second one here. So I've got a 24 frame, we, so this here, this timeline is now 1920 by 1080. The way you find out what your pixel aspect ratio is, is you bring up your trusty calculator and you basically get the smaller number out of 1920 by 1080, you get the 1080 down to a 1, you simplify it to 1, but proportionally what would you have to bring down on uh, 1920? To, to get it to be proportional to 1080 down to this uh, simplified number. So we're going to go 19, 20, and then you divide it by the lower number by uh, 1080, and you get your and you get your aspect ratio. This is basically 1.77 or 1.78 if you round it up, 1.78 to 1. So the 1920 has been taken down to 1.78, 1080 has been taken down to 1, and therefore you've simplified and, you, and your aspect ratio is 1.78 to 1, which is the same as 16 by 9. 16 by 9 is just whole numbers rather than a fraction. It's the lowest whole number you can take it down to. So 16 by 9, uh, 16 pixels across for every nine pixels up and down is what you get. 
but we are now going to create a timeline here that's going to be a wider aspect ratio. So, so uh, this image will actually uh, fit into here, the aspect ratio. It's a higher resolution, but if we put it in here and scale it down, and scale it down to fit. Right now you see it's blown up and it's uh, it's cropped out of, the, out, out of the image because it is 4K in a 1920 by 10, 1080 timeline. If I right click on this and say scale to frame size, uh, this fits in it pretty well. It's pretty darn close. You have a little bit of what's called pillar boxing on the side, just a teeny sliver. So the aspect ratio isn't quite exactly 1.78 to one. In fact, let's figure out what it is. Let's look at this clip. I'm gonna select it. This is 4096 by 2336. So let's go to the calculator. And we're going to do 4096, same uh, math here, and divided by 2336. And it is very, very close. It's a little less, it's a little less wide than 1.78 to 1, and that's why it's creating that pillar box. But it is essentially 16 by 9, very, very close to 16 by 9 or 1.77 to 1. But let's do this. I'm going to create a new timeline, and we're going to make it a 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio. Let's go new sequence. I'm going to start out by doing a 1080, and then we're going to change the, the properties here. I'm going to right-click on it, and we're going to go to Sequence Settings, and I'm going to do a Custom Aspect Ratio here. I'm going to make this a very typical 2K timeline for projecting in theaters is 1998 by 1080. And now I'm going to hit OK. And now we've got our 1998 by 1080, our 2K timeline here. And if we do the math on that, 1998 divided by 1080 we get a 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio. So that's our that's our cinema aspect ratio. That's one type of cinema aspect ratio is 1.85 to 1. So let's drop this clip down inside and keep the existing settings here and look at this and we're going to crop this, scale it to fit. Notice you get more pillar boxing on the sides, but what we're going to do is we're going to increase the size here to fill the screen. So I'm going to go to motion control, I'm going to grab the scale, I'm going to scale this up until the sides meet the edge of the screen. And that's, this is what's going to happen in, in coloring. This is what ha has happened with the uh, with film early on. With film, when they projected in film, there we go. Uh, th those sides are just barely meeting the edge now. But look what we've got here. This is one reason why they shoot on, on more of a full-frame sensor on a, larger sen on a larger sensor with wider, with a taller pix with a taller aspect ratio is so they can do some cropping afterwards. I can grab the vertical position and shift this up and down. And we and say we don't like the headroom. Say we want the head to ride the top of the frame there. We can just move that up a, a little bit further until we start seeing that bottom letterbox there and then bring that back down. But we have a little bit of reframing ability that we can do there. We can kind of shift that up and down until we get the framing that we want. And this gets a little confusing, but there's an article online that goes through the process of uh, this kind of more full frame um, of this larger frame uh, image that they shoot on and then crop later on. And uh, this article on Gone Girl, uh, directed by David Fincher, uh, what they actually use, if you read this article, I'll post this in the in the description so you can visit visit that link and read the article. But it goes through it goes through the specs on the camera that they use. They shot with a red camera and they shot in 6K. As I mentioned here in the article, the, uh, the film Gone Girl was shot in 6K on a red camera and uh, they did have and had a full 4K pipeline. Uh, kind of what the, if you scroll through the article, you're gonna find some spots where they start talking about resolution. And we're gonna get a little mathy here, but as we come down to the timeline, uh, they're interviewing in the article down here, you'll notice they've got the dimensions for their 6K footage was 6144 by 3072. Let's take our calculator. Too much math we're doing here. But let's take our calculator and we're gonna go 6144 divided by 3072 equals two. This was a two to one aspect ratio. So that's wider than 1.85 to one, that's two to one. But what they actually wanted to project in is two four zero to one, you see it right here. So they had a larger frame than they actually needed. So they had a little bit more room, a little bit of leniency that they can uh, t tilt up and down to get a little less headroom, a little more headroom, just to kind of nitpick a little bit. But then their final aspect ratio was going to be this 2.40 to one for cinema, which was 5120 by 2133. Go 5120 divided by 2133, and you end up with an aspect ratio of 240 to 1. So essentially what you're getting is an image that looks, that is twice as wide as it is high. So my math might not be like perfect here, uh, because I'm drawing this little square kind of freehand here. Once again, the bidding for my finished artwork will start out at $10. Uh, so if you want my Photoshop image, but then they're going to take that image that is shot and they're going to crop off the top and the bottom 
basically to get, and this would be the, now the video signal in here, uh, to get a wider aspect ratio of 2.40 to 1 rather than the 2 to 1. Once again, they have a little bit of leniency for kind of uh, tilting, uh, for scanning the image up or down to get a little more headroom or a little less headroom. Uh, that is very standard for, uh, and and. What they did while they were shooting the movie is they would have had those 2.40 uh, to 1 guides on the actual screen so they could see what they were framing for even though they were looking at the full uh, 2 to 1 image. So hopefully that makes sense right there. We're talking about that. There you go, the 2 to 1 image. 2.40 to 1 extraction from a 2, two to 1 image. So what they did is they wanted to deliver proxies to the editor. Uh, so when they deliver the proxies to the editor, this ha deals with compression now because uh, we're removing uh, pixels and we're framing it for the editor, is if they took their image down and maintained the 2 to 1, they would have 2304, 2304 by 1152. 2304 divided by 1152 one, one, equals a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. So when they cut their resolution down, almost uh, one third of the resolution, uh, they end up with a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. But the one that they, when they, once they do the extraction and deliver it to the editor, what they ended up with was a 1920 by 800. So if we type in 1920, divided by the 800, you get a 2.40 to 1 aspect ratio. So the editor was being delivered kind of what the final image was going to look like while they were editing uh, in, in the 2.40 to 1 aspect ratio. So if the editors happen to see a little boom sticking into the top on the wider image over here, they wouldn't be concerned about that. They just wouldn't see that. They would just be doing the regular editing here uh, with the top and the bottom cropped, and they're kind of seeing what they're going to be getting. So that's one thing that we're going to be doing to this, delivering to the editor, is we're going to be we're going to be performing that extraction from the 1.74 to 1 aspect ratio to the 1.85 to 1 uh, cinema aspect ratio. A lot of explanation, but that's good to know if you ever have to deal with this. The second thing that we really want to do for the editor here, rather than trans transcoding, is to apply a LUT to this. It's called a lookup table. Right now, this is kind of flat looking footage. Uh, it's not very contrasty. We want to create a LUT that's going to apply it so it kind of looks a little bit more cinematic. Um, so the, the editor is going to kind of see a little bit more of a cinematic image uh, while they're editing and not something that looks like it hasn't been color graded yet. So this has kind of a very, very much of a kind of a log look to it. If you ever hear of like S-log, C-log, V-log, all these different types of logarithmic footage that's very flat looking, uh, it's meant for the colorist to, to grade that footage. Uh, but So we're going to prep this, also we're going to make it look good, we're going to have the proper aspect ratio, and we're going to we're gonna also burn a time code into a time code window so the editor knows that this is proxy footage. Uh, some editors might not like the time code window, just depends on the preference. That all being said, let's talk about what we're going to do here. We are going to transcode, first of all. We are going to transcode our footage, first of all, we're, that, meaning we're going to take it from one codec to the next. We're going to take it to one that doesn't have such a high bandwidth. We're going to take it from ProRes 444 to ProRes Proxy. The other item we're going to do with part of the compression is we're going to do an aspect ratio extraction. We're going to bring down the resolution, so we are transcode. So we are removing uh, a lot of the resolution, uh, but we're also going to uh, give a very specific aspect ratio. We're going, we're, uh, we're going to extract it from the uh, taller aspect ratio to more of a widescreen aspect ratio. Another item that we're going to do is we're going to apply a color LUT, which is basically a lookup table or a color look, a look, uh, a contrasty color saturated look uh, for all the clips that we deliver to the editor. And the final thing that we're going to do in this compression in this compression is add a time code uh, to a, 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 time, a burned in time code window uh, to the to the clip. So enough talk about theory. Let's get going. First of all, I'm going to select all the clips that I'm going to be compressing. Grab all this footage, and I'm going to hit Control M as in Max or uh, Mommy. And it's going to bring up this export window here, and we're going to send these all over to Media Encoder. Uh, I'm going to tell it, we can do a couple quick settings here. I'm just going to tell it we're going to do a QuickTime uh, file, and uh, I'm going to change this later. Let's just, right now I'm just going to send it over so we can do all the changes in, um, in Media Encoder. So I'm going to hit Q. Those are not the settings we want, but we're going to change it in Media, media Encoder. All right, Media Encoder has opened up, and it's sending the files over. So now I'm going to select all my clips in Media Encoder. So this is a nice convenient way of encoding all your footage. I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger here and see everything. I'm going to hit Control A, be Command A on a Mac, and I'm going to go move up here. I'm going to move over the presets. Since I've already changed it to QuickTime, if you, if you didn't do this in Premiere, you can change it here. You can arrow down and select QuickTime for all the clips, which it already has. And now over here, I'm going to 
click on the actual blue name here uh, to change these presets for all the clips. It'll warn you and say you're about to encode settings for multiple clips and you say hey, that's okay. And I hit okay. I wanted to change those settings for everything. And look at this. You can kind of see the full frame of the film here where it's like has a little curve around the edge of the, the opening uh, of, of the, where the light comes in and hits the, hits the film. But keep in mind we're going to be cropping right about there and there so you won't see the curve on, on the edge of that film. We're gonna be doing a wider aspect ratio. All right, so first of all here, I'm gonna move up to my preset. I'm gonna change this to ProRes Proxy. We wanna take this down to the uh, the lowest bandwidth where you maintain uh, visual quality and we're gonna do ProRes 422 Proxy. Next thing I wanted to get rid of is first of all, if you go to Premiere and notice whenever you're compressing footage and using them as proxies, you gotta make sure you, that you match uh, the, the audio uh, the, 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 the nature of the audio that's attached to the file if it does have it. Right now we just have a film strip. This means that it does not have any audio contained. If it does have audio contained, it's going to have this waveform overlapping uh, the movie file right here and you'll know that that file contains audio. And then it, you got to make sure if you've got, you're shooting on a red camera and you have two mono files or if you're shooting on a red camera and you just have the, the video, if you have no audio files or if you have a stereo file, you've got to match those audio properties uh, when you when you encode your footage up to proxies. Otherwise, when you try to reattach it to the uh, high quality fo uh, footage, you're gonna have some issues if the properties don't match. If the audio uh, properties uh, associated with the movie file don't match. And these ones do not have any audio channels attached. It's just the video. Back to media encoder, I can uncheck export audio. I do not want an audio cha channel attached to this. So we're matching properties there. Now I'm gonna move down to this tab right here. We don't have any audio, so we don't have to worry about that. Now I'm gonna go to video. And under video, we've got the video codec of proxy, which is fine. I'm going to move this down. The, and these things we're going to maintain. We're going to maintain frame rate, aspect. Uh, uh, the, this is pixel aspect ratio, not resolution aspect ratio, uh, which is a little bit different. Uh, field order, all these things I'm going to leave check mark. I'm going to uncheck. because so we're going to take the resolution down. I'm going to uncheck resolution, and I'm going to type in my custom resolution. This is where it gets a little confusing again. We've got to do a little bit of math because we want to do the extraction from a 1.74 aspect ratio to 1.85 aspect ratio. So we have to do a conversion here and we have to do a little bit of math. Let's cut our resolution in half and I'm going to take 4096 and divide it by 2. And the top one is going to be 2048. So if this one's 2048 here, let's watch what happens. It, it, since this is linked right here, it will proportionally affect the, um, the height as well as the width. So let's type in 2048 and now watch when I click out, watch what happens to the height here. It is adjusted to 1168, uh, but that aspect ratio is still going to be 1.74 to 1 because we didn't, uh, we're not changing, we haven't changed the height here. It's changed proportionally. So 2048 divided by 1168 will still give you the same aspect ratio. Sorry, it's 1.75 to 1. The 1 1.75 to 1 aspect ratio, but we want to extract it to the 1.85. So we got to do some math now and figure out what we want the height to be to get it to the 1.85 uh, aspect ratio. And the way we do that is let's go to the math board here and we're gonna and we're gonna do an equation here. We're gonna go, we know that our top that our horizontal pixels are 2048. We know that. And we don't know what the bottom one's gonna be yet. That's the, the math problem. This is equal to 1.85 to 1. So now we gotta figure out what this number is gonna be. And the way you do that is uh, thanks to one of my students who taught me the fish method uh, of, of this. Uh, of ratios here, uh, where you draw this little shape and you go down here, up here, and then you get to go down there and it creates this little fish symbol. So basically, to get this ratio figured out, you times 2048 by the number on the bottom over here, and that it would be just 2048. So 2048 times 1 equals 2048. And then you move up and divide, uh, divide it by 1.85, and it gives you this ratio down here. So let's go to our calculator and type in those numbers. 2048 times 1 equals 2048, of course, divided by 1.85, and our number is 1107 will give us an aspect ratio of 1.85 to 1, of 1.85 to 1. So 1107 is our number that we're looking for. So let's type that in. Let's, oh, first of all, we got to unlink this here so it doesn't change it proportionally. I'm going to turn off the link there and type in 1107. Hit enter, and we get a pillar box now. It's pillar boxing on the sides, which is fine. But now we can go up to our source scaling here, and we say instead of scale to fit, we're going to scale to fill. It will fill it up until the edge of the video hits these signals here, and boom. Now we have 1.85 to 1. It's cropping the top and the bottom. This is how it was framed. This is how we shot it. This is the intended image that we want to see right there. 
Too much math. I know. Phil, Phil, and a lot of people think that filmmaking is not math. It totally is. So that's our resolution that we're going to deliver to our editor. We've literally cut our resolution in a little bit more than half. Half on the width, a little bit more on the height. Okay, a couple other settings we're going to do here. So I'm going to go under Effects. And uh, we mentioned we're going to do color and we're going to be do a time code window. Since we're here, before we get into the color portion, I'm going to do the time code first. I'm going to scroll down effects here and I'm going to check mark time load, uh, time code overlay. And the time code overlay uh, will burn this little time code window on the bottom. Uh, I kind of like it over on the edge, kind of over down the corner. You can position it wherever you want. Uh, for this, I'm going to uh, keep the, the, the time code for reading from the media file. It's just a visual, just so they know that this is. You can even uh, burn in a watermark if you'd rather, just so we know it's the proxy. Uh, so the editor knows it's the proxy. And you can actually do, you can actually burn in an image as well uh, with image overlay. You can choose an image that you want. You can upload a, an image if you want to put a watermark into it as well. Uh, that puts it in the corner, just so people know that this is the proxy footage. If the editor doesn't want it and they tell you not to do it, then I guess you don't do it. But uh, I'm gonna. Uh, those are the, this is the kind of the quick cheat is just to put. The the time code window burn in there. Uh, you can turn the size down if you want to, make it just kind of small uh, so it doesn't uh, annoy people with the image. You can put it uh, down in the corner, offset it a little bit so it's just kind of down in the corner. And now I've got a time code overlay uh, down in the corner here. So, All right, the last thing that I'm going to do here, now that I've got almost everything done, is I'm going to move up and then we're going to do uh, a Lumetri look. There are already some here that, that come with Premiere and come with a, a media encoder that you can select and add a certain look to it if you want to. Uh, but we're going to make a custom one just for the editor here. You can ask your colorist if you have a colorist to, to do this for you, and they can give you um, uh, basically a three, what's called a 3D cube or a LUT uh, that you can upload to uh, the preset here. But I'm going to go into Adobe Premiere, and we're going to make a... Um, a color look here that we want applied to the entire uh, image. And it's not going to work for every single image. Some images might be darker than others, uh, but this is just, you can do it for individual clips if you want to, but most of the time they just do just kind of a general LUT that's applied to all the clips. So I'm going to drag a clip down here inside of my timeline, and we're going to do a quick grade. I'm going to go to color and we're going to do a quick grade here. Uh, the image, once again, isn't very contrasty, so let's go to our scopes here. It uh, isn't very contrasty, obviously, so we can... Uh, I'm, I'm going to increase exposure just a little bit because there's a couple shots that are uh, a little bit underexposed in this footage, but... And then I'm going to increase the contrast. Add some more contrast, increase the brightness, and add some contrast. Let's look at the before and after there uh, and kind of see what we get. So there's before, there's after. See that good contrast look we get? Let's add a little bit more saturation maybe even a little sharpness to it, and a little bit of sharpness to it, and a little warmth to it. There we go. Okay, so this is the look. This doesn't mean what it's going to be necessarily the final color grade for your image. This is just for the editor, so you kind of give them something a little bit better to look at than a flat image. Rather than looking at this image, they're going to be looking at that image, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit uh, more aesthetic. Once I'm through with that grade, I'm going to go to the, my Lumetri color panel up here where I did the grade. I'm going to go to this little uh, uh, menu drop down right here, click on that, and we're going to export cube. That is the cube is the kind of the overall general uh, LUT name um, that, that is understood by most color grading softwares and uh, color grading software and uh, editing software is this cube here. So I'm going to do export the dot cube here. And I'm going to just save it to my desktop and call this uh, color ATFS, and it's going to be a cube, and I'm going to save it. Now we can go to Media Encoder. I'm going to go to the Lumetri look here. I'm going to pull this down, and we're going to hit Select, and we can choose our own. I'm going to go to the desktop, and there it is right there. Select that, open, and ta-da, that look was applied. There we go. So that look has been applied to this entire image. There we got the time code window burn in there. Uh, we've got the color look to each clip. I've taken off the audio. We're transcoding it to uh, Pro. We're transcoding it to ProRes Proxy. We've changed the resolution, and I'm going to hit OK. And all those settings have now been applied uh, to these clips. Now I just have to choose a location. These are notice these are all still selected. I'm going to go up here and select uh, the output file name right here, and, and it will choose a location for all of them. I'm going to go to a hard drive that I want to put them to, and call these ATFS proxies. Select that folder, and we're going to press play, and let it do the encoding. And there it goes. So that's the process. I'm going to get these encoded, then we'll come back and kind of take a look at these. And, uh, and, and see what we've got. Alrighty. 
all finished. Everything's been encoded to proxies. So I'm going to close that now. I'm going to open up Premiere and start a new project. So I've got a new project here. And now I'm going to import my footage. Here's my proxies. Grab those, drag them in. There's my footage. So now my footage has been has been extracted to the proper aspect ratio. We've got a time code burn window in there, and we have the look applied to it. So now I can deliver this footage to the editor. The editor can sync it together with the sync sound audio and start editing it. So uh, that's a quick overview on compression and some. Uh, so, uh, some of the questions I've had recently are like dealing with different aspect ratios and compression. So I wanted to show that little tutorial on uh, getting your proxies uh, outfitted properly uh, for the edit. So uh, if you have any questions, please post them. Thanks for watching.